Welcome to Mount Olive Baptist Church, where we are a caring church, building family, and transformational ministry. We invite you to worship with us virtually every Sunday at 10 a.m. Although we are not present in the building, we are still worshiping the Lord at home as we continue to follow safety guidelines. Join in with us and hear our amazing praise and worship team and the powerful word. Check us out at go to mobc.com. We can't wait to see you. Good morning, and this is Reverend Eric W. Wallace Sr. I'm coming to you today to say thank you to all you out there that have been supporting this church for the last seven to eight months. We thank you for how God has laid it on your heart to contribute to what is going on here at the Mahala Baptist Church. I want to say that you have been a tremendous blessing to what we have been able to do here. And I'm asking that you could, would continue to give, that you would continue to follow the unction of the Holy Spirit as he leads and guides you to sow a seed here in this ministry. This is good ground. Sow here and be a part of what God is doing even in this season. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Thank you again for all that you are doing and will do. Good morning. This is an announcement from Team 1870. We are continuing to celebrate MOBC's 150th anniversary this holiday season by offering 3D face masks for a donation of $10. Please use Cash App to reserve your mask or see Team 1870 at the church on December 5th and December 12th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Get your holiday selfies together starting November 25th through December 25th and send to Venetra Lewis. Video montage will showcase December 31st at our watch night service. Get ready for MOBC's virtual praise experience on December 31st at 7 p.m. More details to follow. Join us as we celebrate Reverend Wallace's fourth pastoral anniversary, the week of December 11th through the 13th, with an outdoor drive-by celebration on December 12th from 12 to 1. Ministry leaders and members are asked to see Ms. Brackett and Team 1870 for more in information. Thank you and have a blessed day. The Beautification Committee is selling poinsettias for the holidays. You may purchase them in memory of a loved one. You can order by emailing or calling the church. Payment will be accepted via Cash App. For more information, please contact the church directly at 908-754-3539. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to our virtual worship experience. We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning. Before we get started, we ask that you like this video and share it, that we may continue to spread the gospel here and there, amen? amen. How many of you are excited about God on this day? Amen. Excited about what Jesus is gonna do during this time that we logged on and we turned on our phones and our computers with expectation that God is gonna do something miraculous. I don't know what you've been through this week, but we stand here in expectancy of, of, of a shift and of a move of God in the times that we are living in. We're just glad to be alive, amen. Anybody amen. thankful in the house? Amen. I mean, truly thankful the holidays is upon us and we've lost so much, but God is the restorer of all things, amen. amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. The song says, I will bless thee, O Lord, mm -hmm. amen. With the heart of thanksgiving. Anybody thankful on this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Said I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Yes, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Come on and help me say, I will bless thee, 
shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Truly, we greet you in his name. We thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for you on this morning meeting us here in our virtual worship. Amen. We are so excited, elated, and ecstatic to be with you wherever you are on this Sunday morning. Listen, I'm not gonna keep you long, but I wanna share a word with you. I believe that there is a word for you, amen, in the text that we have tonight, according to the power of the Holy Spirit. If you would, grab your Bibles, grab your electronic devices, and meet me in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 39, beginning at verse 39, and we're gonna read down uh, to verse 46, 39 to 46. Read it with me. And he came out and went as, as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. 
And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, <clears throat> saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And the sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he arose from prayer and was come to the disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Father God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for tonight. Thank you for what you're about to say to us, God. We thank you for what you're about to share with us through the power of your divine word. Father God, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, put those blessed hands together and give God some praise wherever you are this morning. Come on, just give God some praise. He's worthy to be praised. Anybody know he's just worthy to be praised? I mean, listen, I love to praise God. I know we're in the middle of a global pandemic, a second wave. But can I tell you, I just love to give God a wave offering. I love to open my mouth and tell God, thank you for everything he's done. You ought to be happy that he gave you a few more days, a little more time. Amen. To get things right with him. And so we thank God for that today. Listen, I want to look at these uh, scriptures, but I want to draw your attention to, if you would, uh, to verse 43. Verse 43 says, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him an angel from heaven that came to strengthen him. I want to talk to you with the help of the Holy Spirit for a few minutes on this morning, living with limitations. Hear what I said, living with limitations. Help me, Holy Ghost, to share your word. Uh, on today, um, the Bible reminds us that Jesus is a man of sorrows and he's a man acquainted with grief. Jesus knows what it's like to go through dark, dreary, and debilitating days and nights. Jesus knows what it's like to have friends betray them with a kiss. Jesus knows what it's like to have his close disciples turn their back on him and deny the fact that they knew him. Jesus knows what it's like because the scripture clearly says that he came unto his own and his own received him not. The Bible teaches us that he is the, the stone that was rejected, uh, became, has become the chief cornerstone uh, we understand that Jesus knows what it's like to go through difficult situations. And my question to you on this morning is how do you handle life with limitations? I know we like to talk about living life without limitations, uh, but if we were living life without limitations, then we would not have our testimony about how good God is is and can be. What I want to ask you this morning, however, is how do you handle your life with limitations? How do you handle the fact uh, that you're going to have to deal with things that you don't have power to figure or work your way out of? How do you deal with it? How do you handle, how do you make sound decisions when you're trying to figure out, shall I go left or right? How do I uh, live my life knowing that tomorrow is coming, but I'm not able to see into tomorrow 
So I must live right now trusting God to take care of my tomorrow. I believe that's a question all of us ought to ask ourselves because truth be told, all of us have some sort of limitation. Uh, I know we try to mask uh, our limitation, but there's something in this world you cannot do. We are all li are limited by something. We're all restricted by something. And what I need you to understand is that even though you do have a limitation, even though you are restricted by something in your life, that God has not abandoned you. Hallelujah. I wish I had somebody here who would hear what I was saying this morning. God has not abandoned you. God is not mad. God is not throwing you out on the heap pile. God is not taking you and placing you back in the kiln. What he is doing is God is going to make you what he has designed you to be. I was curious today because uh, this week I began to look at this text and the text said as Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane that an angel came and strengthened him. I was curious uh, because Jesus had just uh, finished serving uh, what is now called communion or the Lord's Supper. He had just commissioned his disciples, all 12 of them, including Judas. He said, I'm going to wash your feet and you ought to wash one another's. The Bible says that as they leave, uh, he travels through the Kindred Valley, goes into the Mount of Olives, finds a secluded place called Gethsemane, goes in there and begins to pray. There's no longer 12, it's just 11 of them, but he is now praying and he tells his disciples, pray that you're not overtaken or yield to temptation. What I like about Jesus, and it tells us that it was his custom. Uh, in the King James, it says, as it was his wont. What it means is that it wasn't the first time that Jesus was there. Can I just get this to you? What I want to get to you, first of all, when you're dealing with life with limitations, you have to have a spirit that says, I understand that I need to expect for some things to happen. Did you get that? You need to have a spirit that says, I need to expect that some things will limit my life. Jesus says, since I understand I have to go through this, it was prophesied that I was going to go through this crucifixion. I was going to go through this time of trial and this time of tragedy. But I want you to understand that I've already prayed. He told Peter, he said, Peter, Satan desires to shift you as we. But the word you is not just Peter. He was talking to all the disciples. I need to tell somebody here today that the enemy wants to pray on your limitation. The enemy knows what you like. He knows when you're weak and he knows when you're strong. So what do you do, preacher? Well, how do I handle this? When I understand my limitations are glaring in front of me. How, how do I handle this when I'm trying uh, to, to muster the strength to get through my get through? What do you do? Well, first thing I need to tell you, if, we have, if you know you have a spirit of ex, ex, uh, expectancy, if you have a spirit of knowing that trouble does come and you have limitations, then you don't mind praying. Some of us make a fatal mistake. What is that fatal mistake? The more troubles come, the less praying we do. Jesus knows. If Jesus knows his trouble is on his way, if Jesus knows he's about to be masked, maxed out on his ability to go through what he's going through, what he does is Jesus finds a dark place, a secluded place, and he has a talk 
to his father. I need to tell somebody today, you need to find a secluded place. I may be talking to a teacher or a preacher or a pastor on this morning, but you need a secluded place. You need a place where you can just get with God and God can get with you and deal with you and break off your limitations and strengthen you when you've been weak. You have to spend some time with God, not just getting ready for a Sunday school lesson, not just getting ready to preach a sermon, but you ought to wake up in the morning and say to God, my soul, my heart panted after you as the deer does the water. But God, I need you every day. Is there anybody in here this morning? Anybody watching me this morning who would testify I need God? You need to pray. If you pray, then you have some power. If you pray, you can handle your limitations because right after this, when the enemy shows up with Judas, when the lead, when they come to arrest Jesus, he's prepared to go through the trial because he prayed before he went through it. But the disciples who were sleeping got up and were, they were ready to fight because they weren't prepared to face, oh my God, what was coming next. I need to tell somebody, when you're ready to face it, when you have a prayer, God will make a way. God will make a way. So not only did he go as it was his custom to pray, not only did he understand I need to pray because I know I'm about to go through the greatest trial, the greatest uh, thing I'm about to accomplish, the greatest thing, that thing that was prophesied that I came here, what is it that he is to die on the cross? <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Bible says, watch this, that he he was withdrawn about a stone's cast, a stone's throat. Listen what Luke records. Uh, Luke records that he kneeled down and prayed. Now you may miss that when you first read it, but if you understood in Luke's day that the, the, the proper or the most common way to pray was to stand up and hold your head up looking at the sky. But the, Luke lets us know, Luke who wants us to understand that Jesus was 100% human but yet 100% God. What he wants us to understand is that Jesus kneeled down. That, uh, Matthew tells us that Jesus Jesus fell to the ground that Jesus lay prostrate on the ground he was there laying in the dirt he knelt that kneeled down he fell down and he prayed he wasn't trying to be cute he wasn't trying to put a show on he knew he was dealing with a limitation he said God I'm going to kneel down I'm going to get down that's all on the ground I'm going to put my face on the ground and can you see him as he began to sweat the Bible says that he's beginning to sweat and drops of blood begin to run down and mingle with the sweat can you imagine and see him with his clothes soaked from the perspiration hallelujah that he was experiencing on that night hallelujah it wasn't because it was so hot but because he had such a burden on him such hallelujah such pressure on him that he knelt down fell down and began to pray y'all I don't know about you but sometimes when we go to pray we spend too much time standing looking around we spend too much time worrying about our spouse and we spend too much time worrying about the kids but every now and again, when you are faced with your limitation, how do you do it? Sometimes you have to kneel down. Sometimes you have to get down and tell God, come. Can you watch this in the other gospel? It said that he cried, that he wept, he sobbed out loud. He 
cried, he wept, and he sobbed out loud. Why? Because he knew he had to carry your sins and my sins. Hallelujah. He prayed. What did he pray? Father, forgive them. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Never, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He's praying. He's kneeling. He's praying. He's crying. He's there in the darkness. The Bible says, verse 43, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. I need to tell you, watch this. Whenever you're dealing with your limitations, not only uh, do you need to pray, not only do you need to understand that you need to expect uh, that the enemy is going to rage war against you. But I, this is the good news I have. That Jesus had to deal with his limitation. Oh, he was weeping. He was kneeling. But his divinity was not in need of assistance. It was his humanity. You know his humanity. His humanity was asleep aboard a boat. Why it began to sink and the disciples had to wake him up. You know his humanity that says after he fasted for 40 days, he was hungry. It was his humanity on the cross that refused to stop. And the, it was his humanity that allowed him to eat, walk, and rest. It was his humanity. And his humanity was struggling. That's what I like about Jesus. Because if he was 100% divine, Divine only that I could not um, be, I would not be able uh, to relate to him. But because he was 100% man, my God, because he was our high, he is our high priest that has been touched like we have with all of our infirmities. I, that's why I love him because he had to go through some things. He said, Father, remove this cup, the cup of God's wrath, the cup that God was going to unleash on him on Calvary's cross. He was going to unleash on him because of the sins of humanity. But God, he says, but God does not move the cup. He sends an angel to strengthen him. I like that because Jesus needed strength. That lets me know all of us need strength. I'm reminded that when Superman first came out, he was a popular character. Uh, but what began to happen is they began, uh, they, they were giving Superman too, too many uh, uh, superpowers. Hear me. And because of all the superpowers, you know, Superman could move worlds and survive nuclear blasts. He could he could use his breath and freeze in something and use his breath to cause a hurricane. He could he had X-ray vision, supersonic hearing. He was faster and stronger than anything. Well, my brother and sister, what began to happen is people stop watching Superman. Why? Because he no longer had a story. Because anyone that has no weakness does not have a testimony. Anyone that does not have anything to overcome does not have a story to tell. So what they did, a writer in the 80s, he reformatted Superman and made him dependent on the sun for his power. They began to add green and red kryptonite. Why? Because they needed to make Superman vulnerable. And once they did that, the story, the legacy of Superman began to return. Have I got a witness here? And that's why I want to tell you, I love that about Jesus today. 
because he needed strength in his darkest hour. <laughs> he needed strength as he struggled to pray. And that lets me know he understands when you need strength. He understands when you're weak. That's why Paul said that I may strong in my weakness. Why? Because God understands who I am. Hallelujah. He keeps on blessing me. He understands who I am. And I thank God for what he does. I thank God for how he keeps me. I thank God for everything he does. And can I tell you, I can live life with limitations. Because like Paul, I can say his grace is sufficient for me. Is there anybody here who understands you have limitations? But God keeps on blessing you. He's been watching over you. He's been keeping you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that even though he was praying and he strengthened him, it said in agony he prayed. That means that he began to pray in agony. That means agony talks about the fact that uh, you can go to battle to the point of death. That means he was almost at death. There was such a weight on him that he almost be prayed and he almost died. Not because he struggled with the same thing we struggle with, but it was because he knew he was going to go through a time of separation. Jesus had never been separated from God and he was going through a time of separation. Can I get a witness? And in agony, he stretched his muscles to the point they couldn't be stretched anymore. Hallelujah. I need to tell y'all, keep on going. God will give you strength. The Bible says that God, an angel from heaven, came see about Jesus. I need to tell y'all, I know we've been going through COVID. Yes, but I need to tell y'all, God will send what you need from heaven. Can I get a witness here? God will send everything and give you strength when you need it. Yes, you know that Jesus went in the darkness of Gethsemane but he came out in the light he went in to Gethsemane in agony but he came out in victory that's what I want to tell you hold on God is going to bring you out I know it may be dark, but God's going to bring you out. I know you may feel like you're about to lose the battle, but God, he's going to bring you victory from your darkest hours. Have I got a witness? They prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He was in warfare. And he told the soldiers that it's all right. Darkness is now in power. But that's all right. A few days from now, I'm going to get up from the grave. You're going to stretch me high. Stretch me wide in a few hours. I'm gonna give up the ghost, and it's gonna look even darker. But early Sunday morning, when we been man for night, but joy, joy, joy comes in the morning. I'm living. We'll live with 
temptation, but that's all right. I gotta come because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. I don't have to wait for an angel to come because I have tears. Have you got tears? If you got Jesus, you got a mighty good doctor. If you got Jesus, you got a mighty good lawyer. If you got Jesus, you got a mighty good friend. If you got Jesus, wherever you are, wave your hand and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. to God. He rose up from prayer and said prayer time is over. I'm ready to take off the limitations. I'm still limited because I'm limited because of sin. But Jesus was only limited in his flesh because not of sin, but because he was sinless. Because in his body, he knew he would have to absorb all the hell out of hell so you and I wouldn't have to go. On that day, on that day, he was going to have to face separation from his father. Not because he did anything wrong, but because he looked into the future. As I was studying this, many commentators said that they believed that the angel brought a promise of what the future was going to be like because of his faithfulness. I need to tell you, because of your faithfulness, I need to remind you that there are promises of God. And those promises are yea and amen. Be encouraged in him. Know that God is making a way even right now. Even right now. He's plowing the field for you. Preparing for your harvest. I pray that you're able you're, and you're ready to receive everything that God has for you. He was in agony and he prayed. I want you to pray today. I want you to know that life will have limitations, but because he broke the limitations, he can break them for you. And even if he doesn't, you can say like Paul, your grace is sufficient for all my needs. And your strength is made perfect in my weakness. I thank God for him today. I thank God that he shows us that it's okay sometimes to be weak. It's okay sometimes to need strength from our divine creator. I don't know about you, but I need him. I need him. I need him. Amen. And he blesses me. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Remember our sick and shedding. Remember those who are dealing with the loss of a loved one. And all you who are dealing with issues related to this pandemic. I want to pray for you this morning. Would you just bow your head for a moment? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and we glorify you. Thank you for everything that you've done. Keep us, guide us today. Go into the hospitals. Father God, go into all the sick rooms. Father God, go into houses where people have been shuttered in, God, but let them know that they are not isolated out. 
let them know, God, that they, you are yet with them. Father God, speak to their hearts today. Move in a mighty, powerful way. Allow your anointing to flow. Father God, in this land, we look forward to the time where we can come and worship together. We give you all the honor, we give you all the glory. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Let's everyone say amen. Amen and amen. God bless.
really matter. Uh, we're working hard. We want you to be a part of it. How can you do by sending in uh, your offering? You can mail it in. You can go on Giftify. You can cash out us. Amen. You can drop it off at the church on Wednesdays or on Sunday mornings. However God leads you, we want you to be a part. So we see in this ministry is good ground. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on today. I'm going to dismiss you with this benediction. I don't want you to go in peace. Now I'm waiting to love, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with all these, your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Listen, I love you, precious hearts. Go in peace and have a blessed day. A week, please be safe for Thanksgiving. Remember that if you're going to be out, wear your mask. Remember to be social, practice social distancing uh, wherever you go. All right. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you.